Hey everybody, welcome to this end top live. Today we're going to be talking about why you should use topology optimization within end topology. Now there are a lot of benefits and I'm not going to be able to cover all of them today. I'm going to talk about some of the biggest ones that I feel are most tangible to myself and to a lot of the customers I talk to on a day to day basis. And at the end of this, I'm going to tell you how you'll be saving time, effort, you'll be getting better results. There's a lot of great outcomes from these benefits that we have within our software. Now, the biggest and the most tangible of these benefits is often, especially when I'm talking to customers, is often the post-processing capabilities of end topology. And what I mean by that is this is where we want to end up. This is a very nice, smooth, good looking result at the end of the day, but it's very often a painful, painful, painful process to get to something like this, right? We're at the end of your topology optimization or at the end of the actual optimization itself, you're stuck with something like this. And there's a lot of work to be done. One, this is computed from a mesh. So there's quite a lot of tessellations happening, lots of stress concentrations that we absolutely don't want in a final product. We have to be able to smooth out that surface. Two, there's a couple of spots around here. I didn't use any passive regions in this one. So it did remove some things. So we need to replace objects as well. How difficult is that to do? Well, luckily, because it's end top, uh, you know, a lot of normal softwares will give you this output as in a mesh, an SDL file, and then you have to mesh sculpt and smooth, and then you have to try and decimate, and then you have to try and convert it to CAD and all that sort of stuff. We don't have to worry about that because we work on implicit modeling. I get this result and it still looks <laughs> pretty crappy at the end of the day, right? We can't use this quite yet, but it's not a mesh. It's an implicit model. And because it's an implicit model, I can make use of this block that we have here, which is smooth and body. It has three inputs, the body that we're going to smooth, the grid size, and the smooth iterations. Pretty easy to use at the end of the day. And it takes us from here to here in one single step. Now, we lost some important regions. But again, like I said, we had to replace some anyway, so I'm not worried about this. The smoothing is, is fairly indiscriminate. It's smoothing the entire object. Is it difficult to put things back together? Absolutely not. It is a very simple, very easy Boolean operation. I grab some spots that I want to bring back, like these ones here, and I do a very basic Boolean operation. And here we go. I have my nice, smooth, optimized geometry. All of my nice, sharp connection features exist, and I'm ready for some validation, right? And that's just how easy and how fast you can post process your results with NTOP platform. And not to mention uh, these reusable workflows that we have that you may or may not have heard of so far. These reusable workflows mean if I make a change to this at any point in the process, I don't have to redo anything. So let's go back to here, smooth and body. It's the second step. Uh, and then there's quite a few more with the, the Boolean unioning and the intersecting, right? There's six or seven more steps inside of here. If I make a change to one of these inputs, let's say my grid size, instead of 0.8, I do 0.6. Well, it's going to rerun that smoothing process, which is already finished. It's already gone through all of my other processes as well. And all we're doing now is rendering out my final design. It's already gone through all of my post-processing steps automatically, even though I made a change all the way back at the beginning of the book. Right. So just these reusable workflows and the ability to not have to redo work when exploring this design space are exceptionally powerful tools that you get access to with Entop Platform. Now, this idea of reusability can be taken much further. This, this part is great. We're doing all the post-processing here. The smoothing is essentially instant uh, and it's all reusable and it can be taken a lot further. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at this geometry here. This is, again, computed from topology optimization. It's going through all of those smoothing, replacing any spots that we need to replace. But what I did with this file, and I actually did an entire NTOP Live on it, is I'm taking this, I, I'm running through the topology optimization, the post-processing. I'm also turning this into a mesh, and I'm actually sending it to ANSYS for validation. And I actually set up a workflow with a software called Mode Frontier, where NTOP is being used as this unbreakable geometry kernel. Right? I'm starting from my CAD part, I'm running through the topology optimization process, I'm running through every single post-processing step, and I'm computing mesh and sending it to ANSYS for validation. And this, I wrote an optimization loop, so you can you know, hook this up to Python or an MDO software like Mode Frontier and run a full design of experiments completely hands-free. And at the end of this, I actually created a DOE table with 150 design points. So you can see 
little bit of information here. If you want to go to our webinars page, I break this down in extreme detail, but I ran 150 designs of this topology optimization geometry headlessly, hands off time, and then I just picked the best design at the end of the day. So when I say this, this post-processing and, and these processes are reusable, I really do mean reusable. Now, another awesome thing about end topology and our topology optimization is the control that we give you over the optimization itself. And what I mean by that is this first geometry that we're looking at, its goal or its optimization goal in here, let me, let me take a look here, is to minimize structural compliance. And that is essentially maximizing stiffness while minimizing our mass over here. That's our main goal, but we can do it quite a few other ways. And not only can we say, okay, we're trying to remove mass, but we can say we wanted to remove mass, but we're constraining it so that it doesn't go above a specific value of stress. So we can actually work that into our optimization as well. We know we have a critical value that we cannot go above to maintain our factor of safety or whatever it might be. We can work that into our optimization. So we have a stress constraint to ensure that about your geometry. And we have multiple other constraints as well, like displacement constraint. We can make sure our geometry doesn't displace more than we want in a specific part. And we have one for overhang angles. So if we're gonna be additively manufacturing this, we can ensure the printability in a specific direction of our topology optimization geometry. So there's a lot of awesome and powerful constraints that we can add in to this topology optimization. And no matter how we change up our optimization or whatever changes we make, again, these post-processing steps, if we already set them up, they just keep running, keep running, keep running, giving us our new designs until we reach our end goal. But our optimization constraints are not the only thing that we give a lot of control over. We actually allow you to define quite a lot about this optimization. And my favorite one to, to talk about here is the boundary penalty. The boundary penalty defines where the elements form in that optimization process. Now, in a normal software, you probably have never had the option to talk about boundary penalty. Uh, essentially, it boils down to there's two, two main choices. There's, there's Dirichlet or there's Newman. In most softwares, they pick one. That's the only thing you can use. You don't get that as an option. There's a couple softwares out there that have both as an option, a drop-down menu. You can pick one or you can pick the other. We did it differently. We have a range. So we have a value of zero for Dirichlet or a value of one for Newman. And you can put input a value anywhere in between there to get a hybrid as well. So you can have it a little bit penalized or not penalized. You get to control that as well. So we're even giving you more information or more control over that. And to put that into better perspective, this is a bit dramatic of a change here. You won't see this all the time, but a boundary penalty of one, you can see is constraining where the elements form. So they're not on the boundary, they're more in the parts volume itself. And with zero, there's no constraint or no penalty being applied. So they're allowed to form on those exterior ones much easier. And this is the difference. And you can choose a value anywhere between zero and one and tailor that value to, to give you the best topology optimized part you can get at the end of the day. So we've talked a lot about the post-processing and how it's quick, how it's reusable, how you get to control quite a lot about the constraints of the objective to meet your end goals. But, but we can also have multiple load cases in our optimizations here. So in this one, and you know, I think I have it labeled a little bit better over here. In this case, we actually have two load cases uh, being used for this optimization. So we're pushing it in one way. We have a moments in the other. You can see force and moments here. And the end optimization or the end output of our optimization is one geometry that is taking both of these load cases into consideration. So it's optimized for both at the same time. And you can have as many load cases as you want, but the ability to have these multiple load cases is another awesome benefit of our topology optimization. But the final thing that I want to talk about here, the final reason that uh, our topology optimization, or let's say the final advantage here, is that we're not constrained by size, or it's not really something you have to worry about at all. This geometry here, very small. Uh, it's about 40, about 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters at the end of the day. Very small part. It's for, you know, an engine bracket, pretty small. It needs to be strong. But if I take a look at this geometry here, this is a very gigantic part. This is about 750 to 800 millimeters uh, one way. Uh, so you're not limited by the size of your part. You're not limited by the complexity of your geometry. Uh, post-processing is, is easy, it's fast, it's automatable. There's a whole lot of reasons why you should be using topology optimization from end topology. Now, I certainly didn't talk about every 
single reason you should be using our software or every or answer every question you might have. So if there are any other questions or if you are intrigued about our topology optimization or just our software in general, please reach out to us, get a demo from us. I'll be there. I'll answer every single question you guys can have. Uh, if I'm not there, another expert will be there and we'll have this conversation and we'll make sure that this product is right for you. So thank you all for watching. Have a fantastic day.